Yeah, it's that, it's that glimpse of something better that makes us want that thing. There's a song by a this band called James, great band, um, and the song is called Sit Down. And one of the lyrics from that song is, if I hadn't seen such riches, I could have lived with being poor. In other words, if you, if you never really saw how good some people have it, it wouldn't even let you know that you were poor. I remember one time I was standing on Sunset Boulevard, um, where I grew up in, in, in Echo Park. It was an interesting place because, well, Los Angeles is just an interesting place because you can live in a neighborhood, and let's say you live in a really crummy neighborhood. You can go just a few blocks north, literally like two or three blocks north, and all of a sudden you're in a neighborhood with like multi-million dollar homes. And then you can turn to the left, go east, and you can walk a few blocks that way, and you're back in a crummy neighborhood. In other words, the, the, the neighborhoods are kind of segmented like that. And so I remember one time I was staying on Sunset Boulevard in Echo Park, and where, I, where we were situated, it was near downtown, but it was also kind of like on the way to Hollywood. So when the, when the freeway would get backed up, people would get off the freeway and just take Sunset Boulevard all the way up into their nice neighborhoods. And so you could be standing on Sunset, and you could see people going by like in Porsches and Ferraris on their way to Beverly Hills and Brentwood. And I remember one time standing on there with my friends, and we saw this Lamborghini going by. And we were all just like, this is a car that costs more than all of our houses. And my friend just goes, fuck, man, we're poor. <laughs> and we never really realized until he said that. Once he said that, for some reason, it really like flooded into us. We were like, huh, <laughs> he's right. We, we, we actually are. And, of course, me being the eternal optimist, I was trying to find some way to explain that, yeah, we had less than, 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 than some people, but we also had more than other people. But, you know, there's something about 13-year-old me or 12-year-old me that I couldn't, you know, really explain it in some satisfactory way. Yeah. Yeah, it's not the suffering that we go through that makes us want to revolt. Because if suffering is, is Tuesday, then suffering is Tuesday. But it's, as soon as you see something better, that's the thing that that um, that's the thing that excites us to, to do something about our lives. In other words, when we see possibilities for it. It's one of the reasons that something that you can be for people in terms of being a role model is to be an example. In other words, you can be somebody who comes from where some people came from and then achieve something great and then you can let those people know through your example, it's possible. A lot of times we just don't think things are possible because nobody we know has, has done something. And it doesn't mean that somebody has to look like us, it just means that somebody has to come from some kind of, has to come from a similar kind of a background from where we come from. And if we always, if we see that the people who are always achieving, the people who are always doing great things, seem to come from a, from a particular background, let's say they all come from Hawaii, whatever, just they come from some specific place, it doesn't seem like it's even possible for us to, to, to come from anywhere else. It's like I think about, it's a, it's a silly example, but when I look at uh, professional surfers, they all come from, they all seem to come from either Hawaii or Australia. Why? Because that's where the biggest surfing is, that's where they get the most practice. So somebody who's living in Wyoming who really loves surfing and gets to do it like, you know, every, you know, all summer long, you can go on vacation and go do it, that's a person who can look at it and go, but I could never be a professional because everybody who's professional comes from Hawaii or Australia. But then maybe there's somebody in his town who becomes a professional and it's like, huh, maybe it is possible. Maybe something can be, maybe something better is out there. It's like, um... It's like being in a relationship. One of the things that can be so terrible about being in a relationship is that you might be in something that is, that is really great for you. And maybe this person makes you feel like you're more than what you ever have felt like before. Um, this person makes you feel more loved. They've made you feel more capable. All of that. And then you break up. It's bad. Because not just that you lost somebody, but you lost the, the person who showed you that there could be more. And it makes you wonder if, that, if there ever could be more again. Of course there can be. Of course there can be. Because now that you've seen it's possible, now you've got something towards which to attain. And so now that's the, that, that becomes hopefully the new standard. Hopefully it doesn't just become like you settle back into your old ways and you always remember fondly that one relationship that makes you feel great about yourself. Hopefully that becomes the new standard to which you, you, you affirm yourself. And so the same is true about just about everything in life. <clears throat> it isn't just the actual suffering that makes us want better things. In other words, we don't realize it. You have to realize that you're in a bad situation before you want something better. 
um, I know it will come up in my other classes, so I'll bring it up now, um, like, a, like a, an abusive relationship. If you grow up in an abusive relationship with your parents, and then you end up in one with your, with your own um, significant other, um, it won't seem like there's anything terrible about it. It'll just seem like Tuesday. And then you end up in a relationship that's not abusive. Now you realize, huh, this is actually possible. But going back to the first semester, it's difficult for us to, to, to adapt ourselves to that because it's just not what we're comfortable in. It might, be, it might be what makes us happy, or it might be what makes us joyful, but it's not what makes us comfortable. And those are two very different things. So you have to try to find a way to get the new thing in alignment with, with comfortability so that therefore you can actually live in that situation comfortably. Did something strange just happen to the lights or am I having a stroke? I think we're all having a stroke. Okay, I want to make sure we're all doing it together. <laughs> yeah. As long as we're all doing it together. Then... <laughs> oh, I think this is just a cloud. Yeah. Us. A cloud. A cloud going by, okay. Man, right. clouds. All of a sudden things got like, like dark and blue. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is it. This will be my last words. Say something, say something brilliant. Ouch, my head. <laughs> my head hurts. <laughs> Let's say something. Right. Say it. Oh. All of a sudden, I feel retarded. Oh. <laughs> and he dies. Scanlon died saying the R word. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Cancel him. Bury him outside the city. <laughs> yeah. So it's not the thing, it's. I'm sorry, Eric Hopper. I didn't mean to offend you with the look on your face. <laughs> I guess I'll leave it there. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? Do we hear me out? Do we hear me out? We need it for the episode. <laughs> Alright, hear me out. <laughs>